This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast, episode 504. I am Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios compound in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Where you get geeky with everybody. Uh, Katie is on assignment, uh, or at least she's missing. Lost to sea in Animal Crossing, last seen diving for pearls. Uh, but we do have her represented in t-shirt form here, if you guys are on the video, in the uh, Cancer Sucks airbike dirty derby shirt that's uh been uh, uh getting sent out this week to donors uh for uh helping her out with her uh breast cancer uh situation there so and also i'm going to give props out because the two gentlemen on this friends of the sorgatron media pb smooth and derek direction from uh erie and cleveland respectively a couple of our pro wrestling friends uh they are doing an airbike derby based on the over four thousand dollars i think it was that was raised uh, to help Katie with her hospital bills. Um, that will be this Thursday night. I believe they're going to be doing it on Instagram Live. Uh, so the the idea was they, ha- they have to do so much time on an air bike for the donations. I think they only expected about $500. So we're going to see what's going to happen with them. <laughs> so <laughs> they're relatively fit. I mean, they're wrestlers. So I, 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 they'll both do better than I would on an air bike for like five seconds so but we have with us uh tonight first of all from studio c in the big d is john chichilla how's it going hey, sorry man. i had to take a week of hiatus that's fine things happen I, I can i cannot confirm nor deny what i was doing or where, where i was at <laughs> what, what were you were you taken away in a van what happened <laughs> classified it's classified no good to have you back with us here after the week off it's a it's the middle of summer we usually lose, use people lose people to well usually traveling but nobody's going anywhere so <laughs> <laughs> i can't use that excuse no nobody it was like well i'm gonna go on vacation no no you're not no you're not right now probably <laughs> so also with us uh, uh back on the show it has been a while cynthia klosky one of the one of the big wigs over there at shift collaboratives joining us on the line too how you doing Cheers, doing grand here. A little, little bit warm. It's been warm, but uh, that's okay. We're getting on. Awesome. Maybe we, we are getting a little bit of delay with, with Cynthia tonight, but that's fine. We can roll with it. We're just going to give her a little time to breathe. So <laughs> in the between things. So uh, we'll make sure to uh, get out of the way. <laughs> uh, how you been doing over there? Have you guys, So you guys have, have certainly adjusted, uh, uh, I'm sure, to everything going on. Not that you were a a lot of people, I think, in, in office, from what I recall, being in there. Uh, have you adjusted well to the uh, work from home situation? Sure did. You know, back in March, uh, we um, had already decided to start working from home before we were forced to work from home. Um, and we already had a, a thing of working from home one day a week. So it wasn't too much harder to make it five days a week. And, um, and actually, we're doing surprisingly well, knock on wood. Um, our, our customers have been, our clients have been very busy. We've had some new things come in. We're actually hiring. Um, if people are interested in taking a look at any of those roles, they're on our website, or I can send you more info if you catch me on online. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're feeling blessed, as they say. Uh, all's good. Excellent. And you can check out everything at shiftcollaborative.com. I was showing there a little bit for you guys on the video side of things, too. Uh, speaking of which, guys, uh, please go check out everything on awesomecast.com. You can subscribe to the show on all of your podcast sources as well as YouTube and Facebook. Please uh, hit us up on the email address, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com, awesomecast on the Twitter, and most importantly, the biggest, uh, uh, the biggest activity, of course, over and at the Awesomecast Facebook group, where we share a lot of the stories throughout the week, and you guys, too, and uh, contribute to the 
show. We really do appreciate that. And of course, you're following us on Facebook Live or any of the other social media, Twitter, YouTube, uh, and the Sorgatron Media Twitch page. We are live every Tuesday at 7, 7 p.m. across all those platforms. Most of the people hanging out in the Facebook um, um, stream but uh, or the watch parties uh, coming from that. But uh, of course, if, it's, if you're not a Facebooker, and I completely understand why you wouldn't be these days, uh, or you want to want to throw it on your Chromecast or, or whatever the case, we are on all the formats so you guys can can get to it as easy as possible for all of our fans on Tuesday nights. And of course, thank you to our audio partners, our friends at the 405media.com that have been carrying the show and streaming it, um, I believe still at uh, noon Eastern time, uh, five days a week. And over at postindustrial.com, uh, uh, Post-Industrial Audio, of course, sharing a lot of great stuff around Pittsburgh podcasting and, of course, doing a lot of great coverage over the last several months about all the crazy stuff going on. So please uh, go check them out. Follow a great source of content, great, reliable source of content, which is very important these days. Um, so uh, uh, please go give them a lot of props over there. Also, thank you to our, pa- our partners, our friends. Yes, they are our partners as well at Patreon.com. And our friends, too, actually. Uh, our friends at the uh, Coffee Club level, Matt Weller, John DeGore, and John Carmen. And our friends at the fan of the show level, Michael Fedor, PGHMuseums.org, Professor Buzzkill, and Dave Partner- Podner. Thank you so much, guys, for uh, supporting the show um, uh, there and, and 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 being a part of that. And especially, I mean, it's become even stronger. We've seen this across both shows uh, uh, that, that use Patreon, that the support has even grown over all this crazy time during the pandemic and everything when other things are kind of going away. So uh, we do really appreciate the support through all of this. Um, and again, again, you guys can support the show if you like what's going on at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Uh, so let's get into our awesome things of the week. And Cynthia, I want to go with you because this is something that I had earmarked for last week and didn't get to. And I'm very, I, I just, I just love the name to begin with. <laughs> Can you tell me a little about a little bit about? Mm hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm, I sure can. Well, I can tell you maybe as much as you can uh, tell. Um, that this is uh, a way to, within all of the stuff that we're doing, the Google Meets and the Zooms, and I think it's in a couple of the others as well, you can basically make your own little Saturday Night Live, you know, weekend update. Basically, you you still have you, you're doing your regular Zoom meeting, whatever it might be, and then you can like put a whole thing, like in this situation here, where you can show a slideshow, basically, and they seem to have their own proprietary kind of thing there, which seems like it's got some features coming in. Um, but you can then like make it fill the screen and then you can be tiny. You can put yourself down here and do like, a, um, you know, a, a, what is that show? Uh, you know, the, the, the one with the movies uh, where the little robot. Oh, like Mystery Science Theater kind of, kind of thing. Exactly so. It's Mystery Science Theater. And so so you have to sign up for this thing. They're in sort of what they're calling beta, which sounds to me kind of pre-beta, or they're being the ultra stretched out beta. Mm. Um, but it looks awesome and I, I really can't wait. So I'm of course I've you know put my name in hoping to hoping to get into it soon. But the name mm-hmm, now as a marketing person, <laughs> they uh name mm-mm, it's M M H M M. And so the guy says, Well, you know, we wanted a name that you can say with your mouth full. And I just want to say, this is not a branding requirement I've run into before, mm-hmm. but I respect that they, that they've read that it needs to be in there. And, um, and it's certainly memorable. Well, it feels memorable at the moment, I guess. Uh, if everybody starts doing, you know, brand names that everybody can mumble, maybe that's the new thing, like taking out vowels from the, from the ERs of, of names, who knows what the future of it is, but but anyway, this thing, can't wait to get it. It looks really cool. They've got a fun video where they show, I say fun. I mean, how fun is a Zoom uh, video? Uh, other than this one, obviously. But um, uh, it should be good. It should be, it's a really interesting idea. So I, I heard about it because uh, the, the guy in the video actually was a guest on Twit uh, uh, two weekends ago. So th- that's that's how I, and and it was, of course I'm listening to the audio version so I have no idea what the thing looks like <laughs> but uh, right. but they were describing it and everything and and, it, and I looked quickly at that video and I was like okay that's kind of interesting um, I I think there's Zoom specifically um, but the, I am noticing on the sign yeah. up it, it is asking for what conferencing platform I use so 
Thank if you me. watch the video, they say that they'll work on Zoom, Google Meets, and then uh, something else as well. There's at least three that they say they can work with. So that's, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. So because I, 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 I mean, I assume they're just like they're like just capturing your video and running it through their thing and then feeding it to the tool like they're just kind of like hopping their own little self in between that is interesting yeah because is it is it something that's local that's handling it and and you're feeding into zoom sitting there or you you calling in through them you know kind of like how we do our restream kind of thing to get to all these other like before we get to twitter we go through another software right so so where does that happen Mm -hmm. i feel like i feel like they're gonna they're gonna be like a virtual boinks switcher sitting on their cloud joining on your behalf mm-hmm. the, the the one thing i thought they, was they have go ahead no no you go the one thing i thought was super interesting is when you sign up for the beta it's are you running a version of mac or notify me when windows is available uh-huh. so they're uh-huh. they're target they they definitely have a target audience <laughs> that's a great point so uh, I like the feature they have in there of like you and another person presenting where you're both able to control your slides. You're both able to kind of be in each other's way a little bit. I wonder how that's going to work with all the lags and things like I guess sometimes you run into here on these meetings. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. And I'm worried about how people will misuse this in some <laughs> way, form, or another. Uh, we've all, I think we've all seen the bad go-to-meeting situations, right? So, um, and really, I feel that I feel like that's what this is aimed at. Like, I, I feel like this is the you know I want to move it maybe not just like presenting like we do here or Twitter or something to like a video show kind of situation, but but it, I think this could be like here's the slide over my shoulder to show you. You know, so I'm just not a distant voice over a slideshow situation, which just always seems unnerving to me um, <laughs> a little bit. And uh, it, 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 it it could just liven those things up. But does it get a corporate ad- adoption? I'm not sure with a name like mm-hmm. So uh, we'll, we'll see where it goes from there. But who knows right now? I mean, that Zoom has become so prominent in these last couple of months has kind of kind of been incredible, right? So, so what I'm interested in seeing is what what the shift is. Because I think there's going to be a certain segment of Zoom fatigue, mm-hmm. and I'm also interested in how Zoom g- bridged the gap of I need to see people and I need to share my screen in a very simplistic manner. Mm-hmm. I still don't think that it creates, and and I think you may have something in the show notes later for for some further uh, on the topic, but they don't they still don't replace the conference room. Um, the whiteboard, some of the other feature functionality that I get out of physically being in a conference room. And I don't think anyone has cracked that nut yet. Not even like Microsoft, like Microsoft Teams or something hasn't, hasn't done that? Teams has whiteboard and it's pretty good. If you're in the enterprise, I think it does even better. Where I think we still haven't bridged the gap is how do I create, and People like us are better at figuring this out, but how do you create the digital bump into someone in the coffee room or walking down the hall or in the elevator? There's no natural, we're we're good at Twitter, right? And we're good and, and other social networks to virtually bump into someone or look at something someone's responding to and say, hey, I wanna follow them too. Yeah, and then kind of work ourselves into that conversation. I would not say that's the average information worker or non-information worker, and that's where I think we need to get the work stream collaboration. It, it, to me, it's one step beyond your typical just audio, video, screen share communication. How do we really get to that? It's like we're in the same room working on something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's no Can slack. Can I ask? Have you guys have you guys checked out Mural.io? Because it yes. addresses some of it. Definitely doesn't do the the um, the sort of the water cooler coffee standing around the coffee chatting, getting to know each other thing. But I think for like groups of people working together, and I haven't had a chance to play with all the Teams things um, on Microsoft, um, but 
But Mural IO allows you to kind of, if you're setting up like a brainstorm, you can set something up, people can work on it. People who don't know a lot can get into it pretty easy. The, the, um, oh, is it the, uh, .io the or .co? initial learning curve is slow. Is it .io or .co? I, I thought it was .io. Let me just double check. So I'm finding one under a .co. But, um, it says, uh, put no, your... I'm sorry. Okay. You're right. You're right. Okay. You're no right. problem. Just want to yeah. clarify that we're on, we're on the same page. Or, uh, sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. I should have looked it up. Yeah. No, it's cool. Um, so, like, if you look, if you show their, the screen on that, you can see that you see the people dragging the stuff around. Like, my, as you know, like, consultants like me, like, we spend all our times with sticky notes brainstorming. So, mm -hmm. this, you know, obviously naturally we gra gravitate to it. But you can also do some very clever, smart diagramming type things. And like a new, like a client of ours coming in with no knowledge can participate right away in the way that you would with like your Sharpies and your stickies uh, on the spot. So as far as like everybody working together and sharing a whiteboard, it's the closest whiteboard experience I've had so far. Um, it doesn't help the sort of group situation and the company culture piece. That's a whole, that's a, that's a different thing. And I don't have solutions for that, but but I really like this, and I, if you haven't tried it, I would I would suggest you check it out. I, I highly su suggest Mural. I really like it. They have the ability to do templates, so if you want to re build a template and reuse it, um, you can kind of upvote on areas or objects that you've kind of put on there. So if you mm -hmm want to kind of do sticky notes for ideas you it has sticky notes built in or you want to kind of draw out your idea and then someone goes out and draws out another idea and another idea you can upvote or kind of thumbs up and vote on those items um, miro is another one m-i-r-o um, that comes close to mural probably not as advanced as mural um, Mural does have integration with Teams, so if you're a Teams company, and I think they also integrate with Slack and a couple others, um, so you can plug those into your persistent chat tool of choice. Um, they do, the closest Microsoft comes is Whiteboard, and Whiteboard is trying to catch up, but they're definitely, Mural, this is the one thing they do, and they do it extremely well, um, and I was I was very impressed with a lot of their capability. I can't, I can't remember. It's something ridiculous. Like using mural is like having a 20 foot tall by 90 foot wide whiteboard. It's something ridiculously large mm -hmm. that you would never get into a conference room. That was really one of the things we appreciated about it was just the sheer size of the space and the fact that it gives you you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can get a really good strategic view, and then you can zoom way in and do things. You can see who's doing what. It is pretty. It's a really slick interface. Very cool. Are you are you using it? Because one of the the bridges that I'm trying to get, or gaps that I'm trying to bridge as well, is not everyone has a touchscreen device. Do you guys find it just as easy to use keyboard and mouse, or are you guys using? some kind of touch screen along with it. Um, how's that work? I think out? most of the people on my team, there's a couple of folks that have a touch screen. I don't know if they're using it with this. I myself just use my, you know, my Apple touch pad, um, okay. which is, you know, I'm kind of clunky on, but. They, they have a, they have an iOS app. I think they have an Android app they, they have for those types of devices, they support any web browser and there's apps in the different app stores. So. But I, I was interested to see how others were were faring with non touchscreen type devices. So far, so good. Everybody's. I mean, we're, we're like, we had our like our summer intern build like a presentation with it. <laughs> We've had a lot of fun. Cool. Awesome. Well, while we're along that line, Shilla, what is uh, your awesome thing of the week? So. While it's hot outside, um, I decided, hey, why not go outside and do stuff out there? And much like the home automation that I have put in the house, I thought, hmm, how can I bring that outside the house? Um, <clears throat> full disclaimer, I was already a Ring customer from a doorbell perspective and recently wanting to get off of the high price of my monthly um Security subscription, we also moved to Ring for that. I think I may have, I'm sure I told the 
TV story back around the holidays um, and my experience with the ring doorbell. So I decided. Uh, and and hey, just just a flashback for anybody new. Um, there was a television theft around the holidays. Um, please go check out. I believe we did do a special edition around the the uh, Christmas week that you can go back and watch. And he goes through the whole ordeal of somebody taking the TV and then returning it later. And we got him on video <laughs> doing so <laughs> within hours because of the uh, because of all the technology and social involved in his neighborhood. But but great story. But anyway, sorry. Thanks. No, that's good. Um, so I started looking at, hey, how can I tie it kind of all together and what, wh whose product should I buy? The typical, do I find something that integrates with Alexa or try to find Google or HomeKit or all of them or how does this all work? So I said, you know what, I'm already a Ring customer. It wasn't that far off from some of the tech because um, I wasn't doing any more video cameras, but I wanted something that would automate lighting. So I started with the path lights, which I was surprised are battery operated, uh, three or four D cell batteries. Um, and they came with their little home hub connector kit. And I was off to the races with most motion detection and pathway lighting. Hmm. Um, I got a two, a two pack for a reasonable price. Um, and then I thought, oh, I really like these. What if I replace one of my spotlights with the D cell spotlight that will also be motion lit? And then I thought, well, if these all, can all detect motion and I put in um, low voltage lighting in my backyard, I can buy their transformer. And then to seal the deal, it was, okay, I can do all of this cool light automation with the spotlight coming up my back steps from my garage. Mm -hmm. um, and it can trigger and do a bunch of stuff. And I can trigger, if you come into the front of the house and hit the front pathway lights, then I can automatically flip on and start the, the, the doorbell recording if it doesn't pick up motion to begin with. Um, all kinds of cool stuff. So then I thought, hmm. The only thing I'm missing is when I go out my back door and I start down the steps, I want my entire back patio to light up now. So I bought a step light that is solar powered. So it just recharges the light. It picks up the motion. The cool thing too is then when I step out of the back porch and, and I'm leaving at night, it lights up my steps, the back patio, and the spotlight going down to the garage. And if I'm walking out of the garage and up the steps, when I trip the sensor on the light going, the spotlight going up the steps, it then lights up my back patio and the step light um, up the back step. So it was, it's, I've completely automated my outdoor lighting based on the first step you take on the property then determines Jeez. or off or towards going off the property. All kinds of things are set into motion. That is a new level in Chilla's house of the future, <laughs> which is now Chilla's yard of the future, apparently. Yes. So they, they all tie together. I'm, I'm just happy to have a couple. Listen, I'm still in, cause I don't have a, uh, I, I don't have a coherent um, voice assistant in my house. It, depending on which room I am, I'm in it's a or G. Um, so I keep yelling at the wrong one. <laughs> I'm like my mom with her, with, with her children's names. Uh, so, but, uh, I'm like, I'm like, why, why, why is this light not, not going off? Because I'm, I'm yelling at the wrong name. Oh, geez. It, that, I, so I'm looking at the site, um, while you're talking about it. I, I didn't know ring, ring really stepped up a lot of hardware. Yeah, I don't know if they bought, uh, it caught me off guard too, because it all started when I was frustrated for the third time I was going to have to replace some solar lighting. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm all for the energy efficiency. And I was like, you know what, at least for this small segment, I'm going to do um, some low voltage. And then I got into the, oh, well, this can be I can solar power part of it. I can rechargeable battery part of it. Um, and I'm happy with the rechargeable battery that I have run into the doorbell. Um, so I figured it's just lighting up a light. It can't be any worse. Mm -hmm. um, 
So no, I've been, I, I don't know if they acquired someone where they, if they just saw this and went after it. There's, there's been such a list. Kudos right? to them. So, all right. Well, my awesome thing is, you know what I, oh, go ahead. Can I just add one thought? I, so I have two thoughts. One is I admire that all these designs that I see on their page, they are shielded to the, to the, to the sky. So that it's going to reduce light pollution, mm -hmm. like, and, and which is an important thing. I think, you know, we, we scatter so much light up to the sky. There's all kinds of pollution we have, but that in particular <clears throat> makes it hard to do things like watch the, um, you know, watch the um, comet right now or uh, mm -hmm. all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So that's very cool. Um, and then, but my, my real question to you is how many times are, have like the rabbits and squirrels and chipmunks of your yard lit up your yard in the course of a single night? I think because of the where I placed the sensors, so chipmunks, rabbits, et cetera, do not go up and down the back steps because it's like a small alleyway between two garage garages set of steps. Um, and the other motion sensor is they're at the tops of steps primarily. They'll catch your motion as you approach the set of steps, but by being on the top, you walk up and start to as soon as you hit the bottom step, you're detected, but it's high. Those steps are that top step is high enough that it's not picking up. It, I haven't had, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I haven't had a deer come through yet, <laughs> but other than that, I would be surprised. We do have a groundhog that likes to climb the steps from time to time, but I think it'd be low enough to the ground, even on the back steps, it probably wouldn't get picked up. It's like when you have but sensors. I was going to say, um, like, how Tom Cruise or Ethan Hunt is going to get into your house. He's going to find a way. Some guy yes. is going to have his own route. He'll repel down from the roof. That's yeah. what it is. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, it was, it's kind of like when you're putting the, the the guardian sensors in my house, and 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 it's like, okay, what is, what is the cat not going to trip? <laughs> kind of thing. So, Well, my awesome thing of the week involves Superman building a computer. Uh, so it, it was, and it was dropped on a day when I, there was like nothing but bad news on Twitter, uh, going on, like, I don't know, last Thursday or Friday or something. And, and, and then all of a sudden like top trending is, uh, Henry, Henry Cavill, uh, uh, built just a, a five minute video more or less of just him building his computer. And it's, I guess he was, I don't know where he was. He was probably on some, some geeky show or something. And they were talking about like, like, you know, does, does he game or anything? He says he wants to try to build a computer. He did it. It's uh it's it, I, at the entire time he's fussing with this. I'm presuming it is a, a water cool um, kind of situation. And it's just like hanging out as he's trying to figure things out. And you watch the sun go down uh, out the window as he's going. So you can tell he's been at this for a good long time. Uh, it, it is, uh, it, it's a lot of fun. He, he, he definitely set up like a Logitech camera and, uh, he was wearing a GoPro at one point when he's really tinkering with, uh, uh, putting the CPU in, which Chilla, you've built some computers. Cynthia, you, you've built, you've built some computers too in your day, right? Oh yeah. I've, I've, I've assembled a couple boards, but I can't be said to have done anything remotely like this. Okay. So, so, um, he, there was a sensor that gives your CPU, GPU, um, um, uh, temperature and he got it booted up and it was upside down. It's, it's the water cooling thing that's attached to the chip, right? Like that, that goes on like the heat sink kind of situation. So he had to re putty <laughs> his uh cpu and i'm just like oh man that's, that's dedication right there so um just because it was upside down apparently so go check that out it's just look up henry cavill pc build and you'll find it and it's uh it's pretty great actually here it is coming up in the video here and there's like a wtf in there there's a point where he he, he like the video stopped because he he literally ran out of hard drive space on he's, because he's obviously using the logitech camera to capture a lot of the video um so that's just set up in the corner so yeah hold up what the f was that and then it rolls right into that um hold on it's going to show that in a second for you guys on video there it is there's an upside down 20 <laughs> so uh go check that out that's that was a nice little break for the week and a lot of crazy stuff going on 
All right, guys, go check out also our good friends here in the Pittsburgh area supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. It was nice to go visit them this week. Now I'm off quarantine. Uh, uh, place on Broadway and Beachview, Carnegie East End, PNC Park. I understand there's some baseball there. I don't think you can visit the baseball, but I think you can still visit P- Slice on Broadway. Uh, so our good friends there uh, supporting, again, us for a good long time, the majority of our 10 years of the awesome cast. And um, I really look forward to a day where I can share the pizza with people we actually did have a guest on mayhem show uh two weeks ago so uh but uh it, looking forward to to the sharing the pizza goodness with you guys in the future has been feeding a lot of our guests that come in here chilla i know you miss it i know you miss coming in here and doing that so we're gonna, gonna have to do another round of uh pizza pizza deliveries again at some point here so but go check out our friends slice on broadway.com uh for supporting us and please support them too so we got a couple. We got a lot more stories in here. We'll see what we can touch on with the time left here. Oh, the dog is the dog's waking up. If you hear that in the background, um, this is a little bit of a local uh, uh, uh look too. Uh, Chilla, I know you are a um, you are a a, a tier a public trans uh, uh pu- public transportationist. Is that a you know that's our word now? When I, when I was publicly transporting, yes, yes, when you're publicly transporting. Uh, you, you haven't had to do any house calls to the big bank or anything like that. Have you? No. In fact, we're kind of urged. Not we have to, to have a reason if we need to yeah, go. Yeah. a pretty good reason. Yeah. So apparently, uh, according to next Pittsburgh, uh, they're, they're, they're working on, there's a uh, room to ride. It's going to, it, it is, uh, they're, they're rolling this out for, uh, riders, um, and it's going to let you know how many people are on the bus. They, they've apparently limited a bus to about 10 people, so you can properly um, social distance, but it'll give you an idea of the average and, um, and, and everything on ride, so you can kind of plan accordingly uh, to it. So it's over on uh, Port Authority. Uh, uh, look for a room for a ride over there, and, uh, yeah, you can go in and look up your, look up your listing, and it gives you a good average of uh, how many riders are on at any given time um, and and what the capacity is and everything like that, what the type of bus is. So if you are looking to safely avoid um, any, and I wonder if, it, you, know, you know, some of these are 15 rider capacities, some of these are 10 rider capacities. I don't know what the T is doing um, for, for their sizes and everything, but uh, yeah, man, that, that's, how many people were usually packed on a bus beforehand like it, it had been like yeah, like 30 people right oh i mean even if you think of like the double buses like with the accordion mm. if you were if you were going from the city to oakland on like any of those 61 and 71s i mean it was you were jam-packed it would be like riding the t when a baseball game lets out yeah yeah you like, know what I mean, like or or the Steelers let out on a Sunday. Yeah, it feels like there was be, feels like there's like 50 people on a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I totally could have used this back in the day when I was riding the bus, you know, more. <laughs> and Even without a pandemic, I would I would like to know. And I don't know if this was How something. I, my day. I don't know if this is something that was already in the works. Uh, that that they they maybe stepped up or something like that, but. Uh, I'm wondering, if, and and this is you know, take it with the this is third hand information. I know some people that were that have to go in to their place of work, and they have actually switched to driving, mm-hmm. um, because they felt uncomfortable on the bus. Oh yeah, and I, I can believe that. And the train. Thankfully, so. the I think driving into work probably is still not at capacity, right? For for going to downtown, I, I haven't been out during rush hour to see see what any of it looks like. But um, no, I think the gripe that I've been hearing from the people that I know that have to go in, the gripe I've been hearing is for a long time the parking was free, and now it's not. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're, but because we're nowhere near capacity, they're just parking further away where there's like off street parking or it's non metered up in the Hill district or, you know, uh, Shenley park, et cetera. Um, and then just walking further mm-hmm. into their places of work. 
Makes sense. <laughs> Makes sense. Well, some good adjustments there. Uh, Cynthia, we've been talk- we talked last week about TikTok and the potential of it could be banned because of all this China uh, situation. Uh, but you, you, you're bringing us an alternative this week. I am. I, um, do you remember Vine? <laughs> do I? <laughs> <laughs> so this apparently is like the second coming of Vine. I, I had trouble like pasting in the link to the article. But um, this seems like it's in some way a successor of it. Like, I don't know if there's any code base that's similar or it's just acquired. But um, I remember toying around with it, or more importantly, showing it to my niece, who was, I think, in single digits at that age, and her just going nuts with it. I have so many little vines of my cats. Um, but uh, so I guess they're coming back. And they, so, so Byte, B Y T E, is this new thing summing at somewhere out of the, Ashes of Vine that um, uh, is offering itself as an alternative to TikTok, t- seeing like huge increases in signups, some ridiculous uh, number it says here, like last week, uh, Vine had 622,000 global downloads in a single day, which is fierce. Um, so, uh, um, they, and they're doing some things to adjust to be more like a TikTok. So their video length is six seconds and they've extended it to eight. I don't know. It's pretty interesting. I mean, I like, I feel like I'm an old in this world. Like I don't, <laughs> am I allowed even on it? I don't know, but I'm really intrigued by the creativity of them. And, um, and if my mind can work fast enough, I feel like it's the thing you have to practice, mm-hmm. you know, or just kind of learn the lingo. And I am, and I am operating it a little bit. I, I think we talked about it when it was first announced uh, a few months ago, perhaps. Um, you know, it definitely caught our interest that it was like somebody beyond. Like it was one of the original founders of Vine, right? So, um, but yeah, it, it does behave at least in, in the viewing, just like TikTok with the scroll up and everything. And, and honestly, mm-hmm. I actually, I actually started digging into TikTok a little bit more and throwing our indie wrestling us as an account over there. And then I'm like, I can at least throw highlight videos, I guess, up there. I mean. At the very least, I guess, and we'll kind of figure mm-hmm. it out as we go. But, um, but I, I think, I think the yeah, the big thing that's going to push this is it's not TikTok. It's not as as whatever the discussions are going to be. Oh, I already follow some people on here. Or also, hey, bro, Chilla, you already follow me on here. <laughs> it's probably everybody. Else sure. It's probably everybody else <laughs> was an awesome cast that day. <laughs> so, <laughs> but. Um, no, I, I the, the the whole discussion about China and people worrying about that, uh, that, that I think that's going to be nothing but helpful for if Byte can get in front of this and become like the Zoom of the uh, post TikTok we're afraid of it era, right? Although I thought we were afraid of Zoom. Maybe I don't know the latest news, but aren't we all afraid that Zoom is not I, secure? I think we were afraid of it for like a week. Uh, <laughs> and, and then they, they upgraded to security and broke out a lot of our webcams or something. I, this is why I've been using Google Meet because it's I feel I know what I'm getting into with Google Meet at this point. Yeah. So, and I didn't you know, know I Google could we, break it at any minute anyway. Yeah, there's that. I like or probably, deprecate it. We could be equally afraid of all of them, I think, if we really, really tried and maybe knew a little bit more. So uh, it's it's almost like, what are we blinding ourselves to yeah, in any situation? Yeah, there's that. There's that. Everything kind of kind of rolls together with that, doesn't it? Um, but anyways, <laughs> uh, seeing where well, we're so, at. But, but to be creative on a, on any of these, TikTok, Vine, whatever, like I understand, I'm, 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 I know you guys are familiar with Sarah Cooper, the woman who does the really amazing minds of, of our... Um, president and um so like it takes her four hours i guess to do a video like with the memorization the creativity the Mm -hmm. figuring it out and all those things like four hours to do one tiny little segment of video and but and yet i feel like any kind it doesn't matter what app it is to do that it's that's the real work of it and then the security things and so on are are your next thing but but to be to be clever you need to get in there you need to have a smart idea and you need to be be at it you know you've got to stay in the game to play the game you know that kind of thing so i i just i i'm really interested in all of the different platforms i don't think any one of them has a leg up on each other yet no no absolutely not and it depends on what you're doing and what that audience is right that you want to reach out to so i mean you know being on there just to be on there is one thing but uh but then i i've also seen i've one of the one of our my friends that's uh in both wrestling and the in the news media he hopped on there and he just 
went bonkers with it. <laughs> he just he, he's doing he's doing lip syncs and everything, but he is he's a personality, you know, and he he knows to hit that, you know, hard. And it's not even his wrestling or his news personality. It's this whole other personality of his right. side of him that 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 he could glom onto. And 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 I'm seeing ridiculous numbers. And other people I think are just as uh, talented, just nothing. You know, be you know, just just showing their wrestling clips, and that's kind of it. So it's really interesting how the it's a it's a new code to crack on top of everything else. So that's right. But. I enjoy watching the Planet Money TikTok. So that's a podcast out at NPR, and, but their their TikTok. I think they had one one young guy. He, he seems like a like a younger person who just has like a real style that he's come up with, and they're mixing in a couple different styles. But they've got animation. They've got um, they've got things that are just weird video, but they're explaining economic concepts hmm. and they're like really hard ones too, but they're, and they're also things that kind of, you know, we're confronted with now, like what does defund the police mean and trying to do it in a way that from an economics perspective, as opposed to any of the other lenses, you could look at that or, um, well, any of these things like really complicated economic concepts, really, really very cool stuff. There you go. Of course you say that. And I just have a clip of a guy in a tie just doing something <laughs> it probably sounds better if you listen but. it probably is it probably <laughs> is oh wait there's a thumbs up there's a little more action going on here i don't know I, i'm just pulling, pulling a random clip to see what it looked like but yeah that's the planet money on the uh on the tiktok side i'll yeah, keep an ear out for that now that's in my list but uh awesome awesome so uh let's touch on another one before i uh, uh throw another shout out hey while well, we're talking about Zoom, speaking of, uh, uh, I think it was a little bit after the show last week, I saw this. Zoom announces a $599 touchscreen device for remote workers. I akin this to the, um, I, and, and, I, I, and I wondered what happened to those people not too long ago when uh, uh, Google Meet became a thing for business, because I do remember a Google Hangout specific device that they were trying to sell for enterprise, like years ago, right? Uh, so th that's what this kind of, makes me it reminds me of right uh so it, it, it's it's gonna have i think it was like two cameras three cameras something like that 27 27 inch uh touch screen it sits there on your desk that's a big touch screen man you weren't self three, yeah, three, three webcams and eight noise reducing microphones yeah and i think it's supposed to pull in some productivity um things to it as well but i wasn't clear on where those were coming from yeah, it can, it can you can kind of hook it up to phone and it can display your calendar. Um, part of me wonders. I I was pretty impressed with some of the stuff, or at least that they're talking about, where you know you can you can remote configure them. So I drop ship it to you when you take it out of the box. It's ready to go. You log in and it has all your all that. your corporate settings. Or if you're doing like a, or if you're doing like a Zoom show, right? Like it doesn't matter what computer you have. Let me send you this device, and everything's ready to go. So I, I thought about it in two ways. The, the Zoom show, right? You're you're on my, or you're going to talk on my panel or at my director's meeting, whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, or I, part of me wonders, based on the number of. And I can't believe I'm seeing even seeing these, but the number of portals, Facebook, I've seen Facebook portals, up, Facebook portals, the number of Facebook portals I have family and friends purchasing, and the number of, hey, I'm really thinking about you know the Google type device with a camera or mm -hmm. the Amazon Alexa type device with the camera and screen. Mm -hmm. For me, it's at five ninety nine. Go buy yourself, you know, an, a nice iPad or whatever. <laughs> or a computer. You have a ton of stuff, right? But yeah, but you don't. But what you don't have is you don't have three video cameras, and you don't have really good microphones on that device. And yeah. you, we yeah. invest a lot of time, money, and effort making our audio and video try to look good. Mm -hmm. um, this is trying to do it out of the box. I'm wondering if this isn't just a play. Let's play to the enterprise first, but can we get these in people's homes as the replacement? Could I replace my in-laws 
home phones with one of these. I, I, I still think it. I mean, enterprise is where the money's at for them, right? I mean, this is all like, like we're all using it, but the, the whole point is it starts getting integrated and there's more subscriptions, right? Like it, it, this is just kind of a, a, a tool to, to push that. Yeah, I, but I also question in the back of my head for most of us that have been shipped home or are staying home. I, I know people that are working from their kitchen counter. I know mm-hmm. people that are working from a very small workspace in a second bedroom or, you know, um, dining room table. And they're, they're already crunched for space with a 15 inch laptop. Now you're jamming a 27 inch screen purpose built for zoom i don't know i I, i'm interested to see where this really fits for business only purposes where where it actually where it actually uh, it's like the the smart boards i've only seen in a couple of situations um Mm -hmm. but uh yeah yeah it'll be interesting to see well, guys, uh, I want to give a shout. Hey, we got a lot of stuff going on here, and uh, uh, at Sidekick Media Services, also housed here in Sorgatron Media in uh, the Beachview neighborhood. Uh, let's be the sidekick in your superhero project. A lot of stuff still in the works. Working with a lot of our clients uh, in the sports space. Still working with a lot of our clients to figure out uh, that next step, and and still this still involve evolving situation uh, with working from home with uh, 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 events being done a different way, uh, you know, and to uh, church installations, which we'll be doing now that I'm not in quarantine uh, very soon. now. <laughs> so uh, doing a lot of that work here at Sidekick Media Services. Uh, let us be the sidekick in your superhero project. Check out more at SidekickMediaServices.com uh, and check out our social media. Uh, we have a lot of stuff, including the last music video we did with uh, Nick, uh, uh, Nick Iben, a lot of, lot of them that we've done with him, a lot of creative work, a lot of podcast work, and uh, looking forward to a lot of cool projects here uh, coming up. Uh, so go check that out. Okay, Chilla, I want to talk about video games for just a moment. Uh, okay. Because there's some big news. Because we were pontificating what was going to happen with xCloud, I think just last week on the show, right? So last week I wasn't here, so That's I apologize. Right. I <laughs> Maybe it was two weeks to... ago when Kraus was on. Two here. weeks ago when Kraus was on, yes. That's we right. did. That we were kind of we were kind of speculating and throwing some ideas well, around. Turns out it was announced that uh, Phil Spencer with Xbox announced that xCloud will be a part of the uh, Game Pass Ultimate. And I believe you also included a story about how the one-year uh, live subscriptions are going to come to an end, which is how I used to do my gold for, for the longest time. But now that's going to just all boil down to a fifteen dollars a month uh, 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 subscription, dude. That that makes so much sense throwing in the cloud, and and they're looking to maybe at, at some point uh, speculation. Maybe you can pay like five dollars, ten bucks, and you'll get just the cloud, perhaps. But uh, it, it's of course running on Microsoft Azure, which I think even Sony PlayStation is running on. I mean, I it's the other thing. If it's not running on AWS, it seems to be running on uh, uh, Microsoft Azure at this point on the corporate level, right? Yeah, um, where I'm interested, and in, I've I've heard some additional rumblings on other sites to say, because they so they've stopped producing the Xboxes, they've stopped selling 12 month subscriptions of Live. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think we're gonna and then we, to your point, X Cloud will be bundled with um, Game Pass. Will we see? And I think this is far fetched, but I've seen it now in a couple of high on a couple of high profile tweets and posts um will we see a multiplayer um a free tier Hmm. but i'm questioning will the free tier be a further distance from game pass so you you're talking about like like the multiplayer to, because part of gold was you had to pay to basically play multiplayer games like Call of Duty yep. and Halo, right? Yes. Uh, with each other. So so that was that was the big when they started throwing in like five games a month between Xbox One and 360 and and those kinds of things, which really I mean that's why I've, I've been on board for it for so long. I uh, just collecting those games, right? Um, hell, I just started playing Watch Dogs that I don't even know how long I've had it in my collection <laughs> over the weekend because Assassin's Creed was frustrating me. Uh, but um, 
it, it's it's uh, no, I, I I think it's that evolution, and I'm really excited to see how that looks. What happens when it comes out? Will streaming be the streaming idea be part of my console to give me higher end graphics on my first gen Xbox One or my PC or my uh, my iPhone? Like, is that all going to roll out in September? Um, because man, if the, if the, if it's if the, I can just pull up like my Halo Assassin's Creed game, you know, and will the X Cloud include all my bot games digitally as well? So it will be another question that goes along with that because that's something that does not happen currently the xcloud just kind of gives you a stack of games that aren't even the same stack of games entirely that's on game pass you know but if it's like mortal Kombat that i already own i have all my save games and 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 it works so i don't know we'll see we'll see what that system looks like here and then how does that compare to but we also want you to drop 400 dollars on this big console over here and then there's rumors about we're going to have a not 4k console that's going to be a little cheaper which is great I don't feel pressure to do, to upgrade to 4K TV because it's literally the only reason I probably would at this point. So it's interesting, Cynthia. I don't know if you're you're following the um the the technology around the the, the new console generation or, or cloud gaming or anything like this. I um so I'm so happy with my little PS4. Mm-hmm. Gave my uh, Xbox One to my my um, brother Jude who was lingering on some other things. So we're our system uh, in my family is that um, I acquire the new console and I hand them down. So, uh, but I have to usually it's a particular game or situation that that's going to lure me into buying a new thing, and I mm-hmm. resist for as many days as I can manage, and then <laughs> and then I give in. So, but I but I'm not. This is a world where I'm not on the bleeding edge at all. Yeah, I, I do like to kind of watch what's going on, and you know, and I and there's plenty of games to play. So, like, how do you convince someone who's like me that it's worthwhile to upgrade? And so, your to your point about the the fancier television. Um, like I don't also want to buy a fancy television, you know, mm. I have other things mm. I've got to go now and like put outfit my backyard with lighting that <laughs> I can talk to you know, or something. So, I mean, there's only so many things you can spend your money on and mm. yet, and yet, and yet, you know, I'm as tempted by anybody else. If I can hear, if I can see some fantastic game, I don't know how good of an ad can they make it. Well, what do you think about this? I, so, so being like, like, I, I, you know, kind of that more casual, uh, 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 you know, system or like that. How how do you feel about like something like an X Cloud or you know where you pay like a Netflix say fifteen dollars a month and then like you literally can play this batch of games and don't even need to do it on the highest end hardware because that's all happening remotely. Like, does that kind of open things up to to kind of observe that in a different way for you? I mean, I feel like it is. It's appealing to me, but you got to remember that I'm also not a group gaming person Mm -hmm. um and this is partly due to uh being female and not really wanting to deal with the stuff you know like i i don't need to keep up i can't drive fast i don't shoot well like (laughs) i like to solve puzzles all of those games are ones that i can acquire for like you know massive discounts well well, let me let me let me clarify because we were talking about i know we were talking about the online with gold but the game pass is like Mm -hmm. you get like 100 games a month and they cycle something through like that's that's just yeah i do understand i I, thanks that's a really important point to make though but i uh even still i mean i really only spend so many Mm-hmm. hours i've got a lot of youtube to watch ma'am I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I cut my subscription to acorn and hulu and britbox there's a lot of old uh <laughs> british television that's still out there that i haven't i've only seen two or three times gotta watch it again i'm just saying there's so much consumption i can do yes so so there's that oh uh, well we'll see what's going on with that and you know whatever it is i i'm just I'm having out on Game Pass, and it's just going to get thrown in there. So we'll we'll, we'll get some uh, first hands on with that when that rolls out. Um, You're probably going to just be sharing so many great things. I'm going to be persuaded. So I'm going to have to like. We'll talk her into it. No, no, no. Okay, we got to make sure we like we, we, whatever. And Cynthia, this is why you need to get this. We're we'll talking to you out in the audience here. <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll have you back in September trying to talk you back into Game Pass. Uh, <laughs> so, right speaking game, speaking of games, I thought it was telling when uh, Flight Simulator came out. It came out is coming out. Just came out this week, I think. And uh, if you're if you're a physical media person, it comes on ten DVDs <laughs> for the entire game. So that's that's the that. 
that, thank you for that visual, Microsoft. Like my, Microsoft is the ultimate legacy company, isn't it? And to the point where, <laughs> listen, we got this new flight simulator. It's going to take advantage of all this hardware on your computer, but we're not going to make you download it if you don't need to. Here's ten DVDs worth, not even Blu-rays, because we, Blu-rays aren't prominent in every. If you even have DVD players, disc players, and anything. So also, if you have a disc in your in your computer, it's probably not a Blu-ray, right? If you if it's that old. So, but uh, I, I, that was that was kind of an interesting. Well, one so how does this work though? I mean, is it like is it like the old floppy disk world where like you put the you know you put them in one by one and they all get loaded into memory and assembled into a thing, or right. is it more like like I saw the I've seen some of the footage of that simulator. It's amazing, but it's mm-hmm. kind of like okay, you want to go in snow, you need disk eight, like. How does that work? Do you know? I, I think it's just an install. I don't. I can't imagine. I don't think any of these are running okay. off of discs at this at this point at all. Um, like it's. Uh, uh, let's see. So so it's not even Microsoft's not even distributing this. They they, they um they licensed that they hired out a simulation specialist Aerosoft to distribute physical copies of the game in Europe. And it's, okay, Europe. Okay, uh, and it, it weighs in at a mere. I say mirror because I've seen some of the downloads on Xbox One, 90 gigabytes. Holy moly. I mean, it's almost like you just think that they should just send you like a, like a, you know, a hard drive yes. of some sort that somehow plugs in. Right? Or a Blu-ray. And then you or a Blu-ray at or, this or, point. Yeah, but does everyone have Blu-ray players at that, point? That's the point. That, that's the point. Nobody but, I mean, I would say I could see like an SD card. Yeah, yeah. An SD card, a... Uh, a uh, yeah, an SD card, a, a thumb drive, something of the sort. So, something but like it does remind me though of like you know the Pixies, uh, you know, um, put out just recently put out a new uh, LP. Mm-hmm. Remember LPs on red vinyl, and uh, and so the red vinyl is kind of great. And plan, frankly, I'm planning to get it and hang it on the wall here. But um, it's kind of like that. It's like like purposefully retro. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, it's it's like more you should display it on your wall kind of situation at that point. Was this menagerie of DVDs? Well, that's Flight Simulator. Um, I think that's a good point to wrap it here. Cynthia Klosky, thank you so much for joining us again on the show. I'm charmed to be here. I'm glad, always glad to be invited and have even more fun every time. Is of course you said that you guys are hiring over at Shift Collaborative. Any other projects or anything else exciting uh, uh, we should be looking out for from you? Well, um, every Friday, um, since the sort of shutdowns going on, and we know a lot of businesses are under a lot of stress, so every Friday at noon, from noon to one, on over on the YouTube, we have a little live stream where we can answer questions, um, or we just kind of riff on advertising and marketing topics of the day, but we're happy to have people drop in, watch that, watch it later, or send us questions, like your marketing conundrums, or how, how do I survive this time? We're happy to help. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you. Uh, and of course, John Chichilla at Chilla on Twitter. John Chichilla on the Facebook. It's good to be back. Hopefully, I'll be back again next week. There you go. And uh, of course, please, again, everybody, please go uh, check out our friends PB Smooth Derek Direction on their respective Instagrams. I believe it's going to be an Instagram live that will be happening over on uh, uh, Thursday night. And I think it's going to be kicking off at 6 p.m., if I recall. And that's their air bike, air bike for Dutters. Uh, it's going to be going on. So if nothing, it will be entertaining to just watch a couple of dudes um, just die on air bikes. Uh, so, um, so thank you. For, and, and thank you to um, Eric Ryan also and Jack Pollock that did the art and um, uh, the art and the, and the uh, uh, distribution and, and, and uh, making the shirts respectively. Uh, some really good work. Uh, uh, shouts to Jack Pollock. Follow him uh jay paul's beard on twitter he does a lot of great artwork and he's actually he's actually looking uh, uh, he does some work for hire um illustrations so uh hit him up so i'm gonna give him a shout too because he does just phenomenal stuff not just wrestling features he's done some other projects too uh so um yeah so thank you everybody for joining us uh you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.